Okay, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm also very indecisive. <laughs> What's up, beautiful people? My name is Sable, and welcome to my channel, Curls of a CPA. We're gonna take you on my perfectly imperfect journey, and today, it's gonna be a chit chat life update. I haven't really sat down and just talked to you guys in a while. I didn't have the time to do a live, so I figured let me just do a chit chat and answer some of y'all questions. Before we get into the video, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and that you punch that notification bell, because December is about to be lit all right and you don't want to miss anything and then also i do share sales in my community tab and so you can keep your eye on there and also if you're subscribed and you punch the notification bell you shall be notified it'll show up on your feed okay but that's enough chit chat let's get into it so i took notes because i could just jibber jabber all the day long and i didn't want to subject you guys to that, okay? So first let's talk about the channel. First of all, thank you guys for 6,000 subscribers. Like, hello, welcome. Welcome to the family. But in terms of the channel, I'm going to be doing a modified version of Vlogmas, okay? Hear me out. <laughs> I did a poll on my community tab to see how you guys are feeling for Vlogmas. A lot of you are into it. Some of you were like, it's just too much. It's too much content, how I'm gonna watch it. And because I work full time and I low key didn't plan ahead, I'm not posting a video every day, but what we gonna do, what I'm going to try to do, I'm not making any promises, but what I'm gonna try to do is post three videos a week. I have already have everything planned out, and so it should be fairly easy to just, you know, execute. It's the editing though. It's the editing. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Pray my strength in the Lord, okay? But yes, I'm gonna be doing a modified version of Vlogmas. It's just, it ain't gonna be every day. It's gonna be every other day, all right? What else, what else, what else, what else, what else? And the videos that I'm gonna be posting, they're not gonna be vlogs. It's going to be a mixture of hair videos and stuff like that. And so what I'm gonna do though, I'm gonna give you guys more background information. Like I'm gonna give you guys a tea on how long it lasted, how I restyled my hair. And it's not, it's not gonna be as edited. It'll be edited but it won't be, I'm not gonna edit everything out. I'm just gonna keep some of the life in it so you guys can have the vlog feel. Now I do have a couple of sponsored videos coming up in December. And so those are gonna have to be top notch, okay? But you know, I'll show you guys, this is what my hair looked like We're right before I washed it. You know, all that stuff, just giving you more of the tea that y'all like, cause y'all nosy like me. <laughs> what else? I'm gonna be doing some random giveaways throughout December. And so make sure you're watching the whole videos. Make sure you just, st just stay a while, grab a snack, okay? Sit down, uh, you know, just binge watch. <laughs> but I'm gonna be doing random giveaways. I'm not gonna be announcing them. I'm not gonna be putting them in the community tab. Whoever watches to the end and it happens to be in that video, there will be instructions and no type of announcements in the title, anything, okay? And so, you know, it's like a little, what's the things called? What they call those things at the end of the Marvel movies? Was it Easter egg? I think that's what it's called. It's like a little Easter egg. <laughs> All right, um, in terms of my hair, it's my hair updates. Um, my hair has been doing well. It's, it's definitely been flourishing since I did my like, hair growth challenge in October. Um, I didn't wash my hair as consistently as I wanted to in October, but it was almost like I was like, what? <laughs> Roger Dwayne. <laughs> he was like, oh, so you out here, you ain't even washing your hair, you out here low key protective styling. And basically, yeah, because if I didn't end up washing my hair, I would just stretch it and then it would just be stretched until my wash day. And so I think because I didn't do a lot to my hair and then I was taking my vitamins every day, I was doing the scalp massages, so my hair was staying moisturized. My hair is doing well. I just hope I don't ruin it with the back-to-back -back buns, okay? Because this is not the same bun from my last video and it's not gonna be the same bun in my next video. <laughs> but yeah, my hair is doing well. I just, this needs to be my last bun because after this, my edges is gonna be like, girl, you tried it. <laughs> you, you tried it. So if you see me in another bun, come for me. I give you permission, all right? I give you permission, come for me. Not too much, not too hard though, because I'm busy. So that's why I got the bun in. So don't be ODing. But you know, you know what I mean? You know, you know, you know, you know, y'all know. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else? I do want to do a, 
my breakdown of the hair growth challenge that I did, um, what things I'll continue doing, what things I felt like they weren't really helpful. But I just need to sit down and actually plan the video. And I'm also gonna share some of like the testimonials of the girls in my um, Facebook group. I'm thinking of doing like a, you know how Bianca Renee, she does a year challenge where she's like, we're gonna do this for a year and see what our results are. I think I'm gonna do something like that. So whenever I do that video, <laughs> then I will talk about the things that we did, the things that worked, um, and the things that I'm going to like keep doing. For right now, I've just been taking my multivitamin. That's what I remember to do. It is what it is. Multivitamin and I'm trying to drink water. Um, the other things, I just, I've been busy. I've been busy. Triangle front. So yeah, we'll talk about that and stay tuned. Stay tuned, stay tuned. It'll probably happen like the first week of January. So yeah. Stay tuned for that. What else I got? Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention um, related to hair products is I am going to be this month, you guys have been asking. So this month I will be doing my product stash empties situation. The issue that I'm having is my products are all over the apartment. And so I need to organize them. I need to figure out what I'm giving away. I need to figure out what is garbage because I'm sure there are things that are expired in my stash. So just give me time. It'll probably happen at the end of the month, but I, y'all have been asking consistently. So I'm going to, I'm gonna I'm a give it. I'm gonna I'm a give it, I'm gonna give it to you. All right, but let's get into the questions that you guys just asked me. I don't know why I said ask me anything because some of y'all really did ask me some, anything. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through the Instagram questions first because those were less. So the first question that I got was, are you an SDA? And the answer is yes. I am a Christian and my denomination is Seventh-day Adventist. Go to church on Saturdays. Yes, if you guys wanna know more about that, let me know, but yes, I am SDA. Next question. What are your YouTube goals for next year? Oh, my girl Rax real acts that. <laughs> um, so for next year, okay, so my goal for this year, and we'll see what December brings. My goal for this year was 10K on the YouTubes. I'm at 6K now. And so I don't know what's gonna happen in December with me posting more. Maybe more people will find me. But my goal for this year is still 10K. If I don't get it, that's okay. I love all y'all that are here already. For next year, of course, it's gonna be 20. I'm, I'm trying to get, this is gonna be 10 a year, okay? <laughs> yes, and so I, I don't mind the gradual growth because then I get to know you guys a little better in the comments and stuff like that. And so I'm good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Um, next she asks, would you ever big chop and start again? So I'm not afraid of scissors. <laughs> Y'all afraid of scissors, <laughs> for me. Y'all afraid for me, every like trim video that I have posted, there's someone in the comments like, ooh, that's too much. <laughs> so for me, if my hair was damaged and it was like I couldn't do anything with it, yeah, I would definitely big chop. The biggest chop that I have done has been to my like chin. So I had like that mom bob and that was in 2010 and so, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not afraid of scissors. I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't know if I would go bald because I do have a scar in the back of my head from my surgery. But I would definitely go low. Yeah, I don't have no issue with low. Yes, but I also am enjoying my long hair right now. If I didn't commit to growing it, I would have cut it already. But I'm enjoying the length right now. <laughs> All right. So someone asked, do you find that when you detangle your hair? every wash day you experience more hair growth or hair loss and i don't i don't think that i get hair growth or loss from detangling my hair i find that i just i don't even think about it i just take my time and i use my hands as much as i can and then i transition to my brush I don't really use wide tooth combs unless I can't find a brush, but I feel like if I didn't detangle my hair and my hair would just stay matted, then that would cause some sort of breakage of something, some sort of damage. I'm not, my brain isn't really there right now because um, I'm, I'm really tired. <laughs> but to me, I'm like, 
if my hair, I know my hair can take being brushed and detangled with a brush. And so I know that it's not gonna cause me any like breakage per se, because I'm gentle, I'm tender headed. And so I'm super gentle with myself, right? For the people who are very like, um, who are rough with their hair, I just, may, maybe they would, could, we could, you know, after time, you know, that mechanical damage does happen. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't think that brushing causes growth or length. I just know that in order for me to have a good wash day and a styling day, I have to have detangled hair. So I use my hands and I use my brush. I hope I answered your question. All right, now for the questions on the YouTubes. So the first question is, what are the luxury expensive products you think are worth it? And what are some staple budget products you think everyone should try? And then, and then she says, should we feel bad for spending just a little too much on Black Friday sales asking for a friend? So I'm gonna answer the first question. Should we feel bad after spending a little too much after Black Friday sales? No, <laughs> like the money has been spent. You, I mean, unless you return the products, you can't get it back. I don't know, like to me, I feel like when it comes to Black Friday, I know that I am, I'm a product junkie and I like to shop for products. And so I make sure that I set a budget for myself so that even if I buy a ton of things, I know that I'm within my budget. And then I give myself a little leeway just in case I go a little overboard. So I personally don't feel bad, but I do think about like what other people are gonna say when I show this big product haul. You know, so me personally, I don't care. You know, it's like, does, did it spark joy? Are you suffering? <laughs> if you're suffering, if you can't afford it, that's another thing. But even then, I don't think you should feel bad. I just think that you should scale it back a little bit and maybe return some stuff. But do what, do what brings you joy, you know, within the bounds of your budget. <laughs> yeah, so I don't feel, I don't, I don't, but I don't be feeling bad. I only feel bad if I'm struggling financially and if I go over my budget. That's when I'll feel bad, but if I didn't go over budget, I wouldn't feel bad. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't let the opinions of others prevent you from doing what makes you happy, you know, and, Hopefully what makes you happy isn't harming you. That's what I, that's, that's all, that's all I got. That's all I got. You also asked um, what budget products you think everyone should try? Huh, I don't even try to think what budget products I think everyone should try. It's been a while since I've used products that are like budget. And so I'm trying to think of what I have in my stash that is like super affordable. Um, hmm, I don't know. Can I answer that in a in my product uh, stash video? <laughs> I'm trying to think. I mean, the products that I have in my stash right now that I really like that are considered budget is probably Shea Moisture. Like, I could use Shea Moisture for the rest of my life and be fine. You know, like their Manuka Honey and Yogurt line, chef's kiss. That is something that's budget that I really like. Um, I think what else is considered budget? Maybe Carol's Daughter, like their Coco Creme line, that's considered budget, right? I feel so far removed from the budget life. Um, and so I am going to do my best in the new year to bring you guys more budget friendly products. I've already started doing some research so that I could bring you guys some stuff. I can't really think of anything right now because yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm still looking through my stash in my mind right now. I'll get back to you on that one. I'll get back to you. <laughs> what luxury or expensive products do you think are worth it? The, th no, the thing, the luxury products that I think are worth it is definitely the Curl Smith Bond Sol and the Pattern Beauty Treatment Mask. It's worth it. It is very worth it. I don't know if that's considered luxury. To me it is because it's like over $20 or it's close to $20. Um, but I think those two are worth it. I've used them multiple times during this year, filming, non-filming, and I've loved them. Yeah, so definitely dope. What else do I have that's expensive? Um, ooh, that bread, that bread beauty cream? That, that thing is good. 
that thing is real good. Um, what else do I have in my, my stash that's considered luxury? Um, I don't know, I don't know. I need to go through, I really need to go through my stash and really see what y'all need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely need to do that and I'll get back to you guys on that. Um, someone asked, it's not about hair, so what is your rec recreational hobbies? And then she said, what type of movies or shows do you watch? Any Hallmark or superhero stuff? So recreational hobbies, I sing. I love to sing, I sing at church. This YouTube was a recreational hobby. Now it's not so much a hobby. Now it's more shifting towards a job. <laughs> I just like to be, cre I just like to be creative. I like to create. So there are certain things that I will do with my videos and my editing that won't matter to most people, but it definitely, brings me to another place because my job is very much, I guess, I guess it's in the category of corporate, you know? Um, and so I have to tap into that creative part of my brain. Um, like I have to do good at both. I have to be creative and I have to be productive at work to feel good, if that makes sense. So definitely creating. What else is, what else, what else, what else? Um, I don't really do sports. I love to dance. I used to play the piano. Now my piano is in my closet. It's been in there for the whole time we've lived in this apartment. Um, so I guess the most thing that I do is either singing or just in terms of like channel creating things. Um, shows and movies. Um, me and my hubby watch The Big Bang Theory all the time. We watch Friends. We watch all the black shows like, um, uh, what's it called? Like My Wife and Kids, Martin, um, Different World. You know, we watch all of those stuff. Um, the Office, we love The Office, Park and Rex. So we go, we do both. We go real black and then we go like dry comedy, you know. The shows that I watch by myself consistently, Grey's Anatomy, Station 19, this is us, but I just haven't watched it this year because I don't have enough energy to be crying. <laughs> I'm not a crier, so it takes a lot out of me when the show just kind of, you know, jerk that little tear. I got top of it. Grey's Anatomy and Station 19 do it enough. But those are the shows that I watch a lot. Um, I watch Blackish. I watch, um, what's that one to call when they're in school? Grownish. Um, Grownish is giving me, it gives me the feels like Degrassi. So although I'm an adult and grownish is probably, it's not for my generation per se, cause I'm out of that college bracket. It gives me the nostalgia of Degrassi with more black people. <laughs> All right, next. Um, <laughs> she said, when is the next time you're coming to Jamaica? <laughs> I go to Jamaica every year. <laughs> but she said, seriously, what has been your favorite product combo for this year? And non-hair related, do you have any specific goals for 2022, personal, work-related, or otherwise? My favorite combo for this year, have, it's, it's a tie. It's a tie between the now, oh, I had, a, I feel like I had a bomb combo like per quarter. I'm just gonna say the combos that I think most people would like, cause, okay, no, no. <laughs> I am also very indecisive. <laughs> but the two that came to my mind, number one, nature's little secret. I got it right here. Nature's little secret, banana leave-in and strawberry styling smoothie. In the winter, in the summer, it has done me good. Done me good. In the rain, it has done me good. Love that for me. Um, the next combo that I was blown away by was the Now I Am Nappy spray leave-in and the her cream from her oat and aloe collection. That twist out. That combination gave me moisture on top of moisture. And when I refreshed my hair with the combination, okay, my hair wasn't weighed down. It didn't feel product-y like, those are my two combos for the year. I can't choose. I can't choose, but I will leave a link and my code down below, okay? 
um, what are my goals for the year? Um, so my YouTube goals, I wanna get to 20K. That is my goal. That is my goal. Instagram goal, trying to get to 10K. And these numbers don't necessarily mean anything per se in terms of like brand deals and all that stuff. I'm just a person that I like to be working towards something. I like to check boxes, you know? And so it's just, it just, it just feels good for me to like, say I'm gonna hit something and then I do, okay? Um, so that's one thing I'm gonna do. Um, I, wanna, I want to land some um, long-term brand partnerships. I don't like the negotiating part of being an influencer. It's not my favorite. <laughs> and I'm not really at a place where I could be like, oh, I need a manager. No, I'm not making bank like that. But I don't care for negotiating. So I wanna be able to negotiate a long-term partnership and develop long-term relationships with brands that I trust, you know? So fingers crossed, I'm in the process of negotiating some things and hopefully it happens, you know? For work, I have some new staff coming in. And so I just wanna make, I wanna shift um, shift to being more of like an in-house trainer. It's hard when you're managing a lot of people because you, for me, at my managing style, I want to make sure that I am tapping into everyone's, um, like how everyone learns and that's kind of draining. Um, and so I'm just trying to take on a little less at work so that I can be that for my staff. Um, and so that they can grow and become super auditors. <laughs> um, health wise, I wanna make sure that we get all these ailments out of the way. I'm trying to lose some weight so that my numbers is good. <laughs> yeah, cause if honestly, if I didn't have any ailments, I would never work out. I would never eat right. Like if what you eat and what you do was not connected to your health, I wouldn't do any of it. <laughs> but I'm really trying to focus in on getting self-motivated and doing what I have to do so that I'm around for a while. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't really have any hair goals. I'm just health. I just wanted to be healthy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think those are all the goals. Oh, I want to be more organized. I'm borderline, I'm bordering hoarder at the point right now. You know, and so I really want to get more organized to make a, like a, just have a lighter environment. I'm not going all the way to minimalist, but I wanna be in between hoarder and minimalist. I just wanna be in the middle, closer to minimalist, but I'm not going all the way there. I'm not gonna have two shirts and two pants. It's not doing that. Okay. <laughs> that was an exaggeration. I know that minimalists don't have two, two you know, but either way, I'm not, that's not where I'm going. I just want to have less things. Next question. If you are comfortable with it, could you describe a typical day as a CPA and how you balance life and work? And she's asking because she's studying and accounting. Okay. Oh, I studied accounting. Okay. So let me talk about the balance. We don't, what is that? I don't know her. <laughs> That is something that I'm really, really working on. Um, there are not enough hours in the day to do all of the things that I want to do, okay? Before I was doing this like content creating YouTube thing, I was super, no, actually before I was doing the content thing and before I was married, I was a superhuman, okay? Because I had nothing else to focus on. I was tunnel vision on passing my exams and being a super auditor, okay? And so when you add more things to the equation that require attention and nurturing, it's it's hard because you, you'll feel guilty all the time, right? You'll feel guilty like, dang, I wish I could do more at work. Dang, I wish I could do more with the content. Man, I wish I could, I could do more at home. And so I've kind of put out of my mind that there's gonna be balance in terms of doing everything and doing everything well and doing everything well all the time. But what I'm going to start doing is to be more structured with my time so that I know between this hour and this hour, it's just content. This hour and this hour, it's just work. This hour and this hour, it's just health. This hour and this hour is boot time. You know what I'm saying? Um, just to compartmentalize or just kind of like, what's the a, what's a word? What's the word I'm looking for? Kind of just block 
you know, time block things um, because I work well, I work better when I am more um, organized. And so I think doing that and just kind of staying organized will help me to be more closer to balance. Yes, yes. Cause I mean, there are weeks where y'all, y'all see it. There are weeks I don't, I don't upload a video because I'm working and then when I get home, I'm tired, okay? Um, and so something is always going to have to be to give and I have to do the job that pays me because they pay me and I'm salaries, so I gotta do my work. <laughs> so for 2022, for this month, I'm trying to kind of iron out the kinks. Um, for, for 2022, I want to live a more close to balanced life where I know during this time is just for content, emails, editing, whatever it is. This time is sacred family time. This time is for work. And I think that'll also help me just feel a little better, you know? Yeah. Um, she asks, what is a typical day as a CPA? So I, so CPAs do a lot of things. I am a CPA that is an auditor, but I am also a regional manager. So my typical day is um, assisting my staff, like answering their questions, if they have any technical issues, researching, asking other people questions to answer their questions, assisting our clients, answering emails, scheduling, more scheduling, reviewing their work, actually doing my work. Cause I'm still, I still do audit work, even though I'm a manager. So. Um, for 2022, it's going to be a little less because we won't be um, understaffed, but because we'll have new staff, I will be tr doing more training. So yeah, that is my life. <laughs> yes, when I know a lot of people, when they hear that I'm a CPA, they think taxes, they think accounting, but no, I'm an auditor and I audit the work accountants do and make sure that it is materially correct. Okay? Yes. And for my girl studying accounting, listen, just keep at it. <laughs> keep at it. Make sure you get that CPA if you can. Make sure your job pays for it. If they don't, you can start it. It makes you marketable if you have some sections under your belt. And you can always ask me questions about it. What's up, guys? So two questions came in after I filmed this video. And one of them is related to the whole CPA thing. And so someone asked, was the CPA test hard? And my answer is yes, it was very hard. <laughs> um, but what I will say is I think that the desire to like, if you want it, you'll you'll put in the work. Like that's kind of with anything really. And so yeah, it was hard. Um, when I was taking it, I was like a staff auditor, which is kind of like entry level. So I didn't have as many like responsibilities. And so I was, you know, able to study. I wasn't married or anything. I didn't have no real responsibilities other than going to work every day. So it was easy for me to find time to study, but I really didn't have like a life. And so I would say that if you were planning to do the CPA exam and you're whether you're a student right now or whether you're like a professional with a bunch of responsibilities, I would say to just really plan and take your time, study, make sure you review, be strict with your schedule. It doesn't have to consume your life, but I'm a procrastinator, so it always had to consume my life because I was behind. <laughs> um, but I would say just, if you stick to your schedule and you study and get through all the materials, um, I think you'll be fine. I think most people will fail the first test they take because you kind of have to learn the language of the exam. Um, and just kind of learn how to take it. But after that, most people are okay. <laughs> but yes, it is an extremely difficult test. So may the odds be in your favor. <laughs> Another question came in from one of my friends, David. He says, is there anything in the works with Mr. Miggs for the hair reluctant folks like myself? Say it is so. <laughs> and he asks me this all the time. And so when he says hair reluctant, he just means for bald people that have beards and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> so I don't know what the answer to that question is. I think whenever he's ready, you know, we'll do a little feature. We did find some products that his beard really likes, so I can share those with you guys. But for now, I'm just waiting, you know, it's his call. It's hubby's call, okay. But let's get back to the regularly scheduled program. <laughs> All right, next question. If you could, what step process of the wash day routine would you leave out 
or vice versa would you never leave out or do you think every step is necessary um there are a lot of steps right if i had to leave a step out mm, I don't wanna. <laughs> I'm trying to think and I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. What are the steps? Whose steps are we following? Are they mine? Um, <laughs> I have the hardest time choosing. Um, my wash day typically looks like pre-poo detangle. Even if I don't put nothing in my hair except for water, I need to detangle in the beginning, okay? So I detangle and then I cleanse. Then I deep condition, or if I have no time, I'll just condition just a little bit while I shower, leave in styler or cream, whatever. What step would I leave out? First of all, I don't wanna leave any steps out. But the steps that maybe if I'm rushing that I might leave out is I might leave out I might just use a co, a really nice cleansing co-wash and then go straight to leave-in and then whatever cream or styler I'm using. Um, I just know that my hair won't like that for every wash day. So yeah, I don't know. I don't like these questions where I have to choose things. I don't like, <laughs> but something that I will, I'm not leaving out. Mm. I don't know. I will always, mm. I don't like this question. I can't choose, I can't choose. I guess because it depends on what products I'm using. Like for instance, if I'm using a product that is like four in one styler, also a leave-in, then I could skip the leave-in stage and just use that cream. Like when I used um, Bell and um, Garden of Bloom's uh, multi-use cream, I ain't use nothing else with it. And that's what, that's what I was actually fired. That was last year, that was fire. You should watch that video, it was fire. Um, <laughs> that was fire. Um, when I used the um, Bread Beauty Cream, I only used that, but no, I had to use oil on uh, oil on one of the sides to kind of get a little extra juice, but I didn't need it, but I, I did. Yeah, so I don't know, y'all. <sighs> if I had to choose, what would I choose? What would I choose? Ooh, I'm dropping things, oh God. I would leave out the pre-poo stage because I can detangle with the water running down my hair. Um, I just don't really prefer it. I feel like it works best outside the shower, but if I had to choose, I would skip the pre-poo stage, reluctantly. Next question. If we weren't in a pandemic, what country or countries would you travel? excluding Caribbean countries. I was actually supposed to go to Kenya last year. Was it Kenya? Yeah, Kenya. My job is like an international job or whatever. We do international audits. And so I was supposed to do an audit in Kenya, but because of the pandemic, I we didn't go nowhere. So that's some place I was going to go and it was gonna be a three week trip, but we didn't go nowhere. But to be honest, the only countries I really go to, if it's, if, if, the only countries that I've been to that were not Caribbean countries, I went to because of work. <laughs> but every year we go to Jamaica and some years we go to somebody else's country if there's a wedding or a funeral. Yeah, so, yeah. Mouth is dry, all this talking. Oh God. And then she said, do you have recommendations on hair vitamin gummies to aid in hair growth? I know hair vitamins don't work for everybody, but I'm gonna share which ones are my favorite so far. I really, really like the Vega More vitamins. Like those are gummies and they weren't super sweet. They were vegan. I didn't have any side effects. I, it was super easy to take. Um, I brought them with me to Jamaica. They didn't melt. And so those have been my favorite gummies. Um, I've tried the Mayel ones before. I haven't said that name in a very long time. <laughs> I've tried the Mayel ones and they taste really good, but I didn't have, I didn't take them consistently, consistently enough to see any results. They just taste like candy. I would have to say that those taste sweeter than the, the Vega More ones, but the Vega More ones are sweet enough. 
if that makes sense. Then the other ones I really like are the Curl Smith 30 days something something one another. Those are capsules. So if you like a capsule, I would suggest taking the Curl Smith ones. If you like a gummy, I suggest taking the Vega More ones. I also recently got the ones from Hum. Those are also vegan and all that stuff. Um, and so I can leave that though all, I can leave all the ones I suggest down in the description box, but I haven't tried the hum ones yet. I'm just waiting for my, um, to meet with my nutritionist to see if I could take those. Cause I have a ton of gummy vitamins, but I'm trying to like lower my sugar intake. And so I'm trying to see which gummies I can keep. Cause I love the goalie ones. I like the apple cider vinegar one. I really like the, the new, like one for like immune. It's like, it's one of the orange packaging. Like those taste really good and I like I like taking them, but I'm gonna see what, how much of those gummies I can take. <laughs> I be just giving, I just be giving all the tea, a two budget tea. Um, so yeah, I do like those, definitely like those. So I'll put the links to all of them in the description box. If I have a coupon code for anyone, I don't think I do, but if I do, I'll put it down as well, but I'll share the gummies I like. Ruth asks, do you still work as a CPA or are you now a full-time YouTuber? I still work, okay? Eight, eight, eight to seven. <laughs> yes, I still work full-time. That is why some weeks you will not see me on these interwebs because I am buried. Um, I don't think I'm going to be full-time on YouTube anytime soon. Like that isn't a desire of mine right now. I really love my job and I love my staff and I just love what I do. So yeah, I don't I don't see myself quitting anytime soon. <laughs> Even if like say I have a baby and I'm like, I can't go back to work, I would still work for my organization on like a contract basis, but I'm also not planning to have a baby anytime soon. So I think that was one of the questions. Yes. <laughs> well, next question, is it necessary to use a rinse out conditioner and a deep conditioner during your wash day? What are the advantages and disadvantages of using rinse out conditioner? So without getting too technical, I do not think you need both. I don't think you need to use a rinse out, then go and use a deep conditioner. I don't think it's necessary. I have done it before, because let's say, because what ends up happening when I detangle with my deep conditioner, when I detangle period, my hair gets poofy. Like the tension from the brush just stretches my hair out and it just gets like, just undefined and just, you know. But I don't like to do that at my deep conditioning stage because when I rinse out my deep conditioner, then my hair is still in that stretch state. But I like when I rinse out my deep conditioner for my hair to be nice and curly because that helps with my styles if I'm doing a curly style. If I'm straightening my hair, blow drying it, I don't care, I'll, I'll detangle with the deep conditioner, okay? Rinse out conditioner, the advantage of using it is you can, you can detangle with the rinse out conditioner. They're likely to be more um, slippery than a deep conditioner. And so you can detangle with it, rinse it, and then deep condition. I just don't, I just think it's an extra step that's not necessary. And then I've also from, I watch Mona's hair and I feel like she had mentioned one time that when you put conditioner on your hair, it lays the cuticle down. And then when you add deep conditioner on top of that, it's basically not doing nothing. The cuticle's already laid. I don't know if that's like, I don't know. I didn't do my own research about it, but I don't think you need both. <laughs> so that's kind of why I started to experiment with detangling with my shampoo because I don't like to detangle with my deep conditioner. And some days it goes well, some days it does not go well. So I'm not I'm not sold on the shampoo detangling completely. If you don't pre-poo, I suggest not detangling with the shampoo. Just don't do it. <laughs> but if you pre-poo and you detangle before you wash your hair, you'll be fine detangling with shampoo, but if you don't, wait till you got some conditioner or leave it in your hair, thanks, okay. For me, I like to use an entire line. Like, I'm like, I'm team 
these were formulated to work together. So I like to use them together until I'm very familiar with the product. And then I might be able to just kind of use it with some other line. But when I start using things, I use them together to see how it works as a system. And so if a rinse out conditioner comes with a system, then I might buy it to see how it works. But if say I wasn't doing like if I wasn't trying products for you guys, I might not buy a rinse out conditioner. I just buy it just in case you wanna buy it and I'll tell you how it is, right? Or if maybe I have a wash day where I don't have time to deep condition, I wanna see does this rinse out conditioner give me enough moisture since I have to do this quickly. So I don't think you need both. I don't, and I think that if people detangled at the beginning of their wash day, they might have a better experience with detangling with their deep conditioner. What you can do is cocktail them, where you mix the rinse out conditioner and the deep conditioner together if you need more slip, um, or add, maybe add some oil to the deep conditioner, but you don't, you don't need both. If you use both, will I judge you? Not at all, because I've done it before, and that's your business, but in terms of need, no. I don't see any disadvantages with using a rinse out conditioner um, other than maybe some science stuff that I don't understand. But the advantage of a rinse out conditioner, more than likely, it's going to be slippery. That is the advantage. All right. Next question. Oh, this is long. Y'all still here? If you still here, put like the wind emoji because I'm tired. I'm winded. Just, you know, the one where it's blowing out air? Do that one. <laughs> All right, what's what I'm talking about? Have you ever worked in radio or TV? You really have the personality and voice for it. Thank you, Autumn. No, no, I have not done that, but I have been singing and doing amateur church acting my whole life. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, no, I just, I think I've just been in environments where that have fostered those things within me. Um, like even when I had my first like real job at a real estate agency, she taught me how to talk on the phone, how to talk professionally, smile when I'm talking because it comes out in your voice, you know? So yeah, I just, I think my environment has definitely fostered all that stuff. And I've just been practicing too. <laughs> I've been practicing all this stuff since 2018. And the perfectionist in me, I also do research and try to figure out ways to be better. So no, but I am very, very flattered. Thank you. Thank you, Autumn. I ain't gonna forget your name now. I might, I might. It's easy to remember though, cause it's written in the, in the you know, your username. Okay, all right. Next. <laughs> Any products that you think you cannot live without? Hmm? So they're saying, what can I not live without? Yeah. Do I have anything that I could not live without? Oh my gosh. That's such a hard question. This year has been the year of trying all the new things and I don't even remember all the stuff that I like really, really like. Um, she should say product or products. Okay, she said products. Okay, the products that I cannot live without. Um, if I could just pick my wash day right now, I would use the, ooh. Why y'all want me to pick stuff? Products I cannot live without. Okay, my favorite detangling pre-poo right now is the Nature's Little Secret Fenugreek Detangling Pre-poo. I'm only showing it to you because it is sitting right here because I'm about to film the end of that video. Um, what else? The Pattern Beauty Treatment Mask. Yes. So I, mine is almost done. Um, the first one that I bought, it's almost done. I've gotten so many uses out of it. And I like it so much that I bought it during Black Friday and the percentage off was only like 25. You know, it, the, the, the sale was not that great, but I was just like, oh, mine is about to be done and I have no more. Um, the Bond Solve, that's another one. But I feel like if I had to choose between the Bond Solve, I don't, I don't know if I could choose between the two, um, but the Bond Top is definitely um, Melanin Hair Care Shampoo. I can use that shampoo for the rest of my life. The Alakay Naturals Honey and Sage Deep Conditioner. I can use that deep conditioner every week. In terms of leave-ins, I'm between this banana leave-in from Nature's Little Secret and the Camille Rose Curl Moisture Love. Like those, the, those two are my favorites. In terms of smell, I would go with the Camille Rose because it has that cakey smell I like. This actually smells like bananas. 
which I don't mind, because when I put the two together, I smell like a smoothie, but I prefer the, you know, cake battery smell, so. Um, for stylers, it's between the aloe whip butter gel and this strawberry styling smoothie from Nature's of a Secret. Yes, so that's a whole wash day for you. Yes. <laughs> Those are a few of my favorite things, yes. And this Nature's Little Secret Lemon and Rosemary Clarifying Shampoo, it's up there. Like, it's up there beside the melanin for me. You know sometimes you use something for the first time and you're like, yeah, this was fire. And that's me all the time. I'm, when I use something for the first time, I am really happy. Um, but it was continued use. I'm like, okay, that was okay. But this shampoo, I don't think I need another use to actually decide. I really like this, yeah. I can live without gel, but I will always have either a wet line gel or Eco Styler Argon Oil Gel in my stash because I don't really like edge control. And when I wanna do my slick back, I need to use a thick gel, okay? So I actually use wet line for this, but if I had that Eco Styler Argon Oil, I would have used that. Um, what else? Ooh, I also like that Sienna Natural Shampoo too. That's a really good moisturizing shampoo. Yeah, y'all, I can't choose. Don't ask me, don't, y'all need to stop asking me to choose stuff. I want it all. <laughs> Someone asked if I'm gonna have kids, and she said, I'm sure you get it all the time. Yes, I do get it all the time. I've been getting it all the time for years. Me and my husband have been married for five years, and uh, we've been getting it for all of them, <laughs> even before, to be honest. Um, and so yeah, we'll have kids one day if the Lord sees fit. If we don't, it's okay. I'm Auntie Sable, and that's okay. Um, but we're in no rush right now. So if one more person asks me if I'm pregnant. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> Y'all need to stop asking people if they're pregnant, okay? Listen, don't ask. <laughs> don't ask until I say it, don't ask, okay? <laughs> um, someone asks, will you ever bleach your hair? Question is, Will you ever bleach your hair? No, 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 no. <laughs> if you know that song, let me know in the comments. But no, I will not bleach my hair. Like there is not, there is no experimental bone in my body that has a desire to bleach my hair. I've dyed my hair one time. This was before I even started my channel actually and I dyed it red. It was that little Shea Moisture box dye with no ammonia. So I'm like, oh, that's gonna be all right for me. But I didn't even realize, because I was not taking care of my hair back then, because I was studying for my exam, and I, what hair? I'm, I'm happy I had hair on my head. <laughs> um, my curl pattern had changed and I had no clue. I had no idea because I had did it, done it in the summer and in the summer my hair is just frizzy, it's poofy because of the humidity. It wasn't until all that color was gone and I had cut my hair. Um, it wasn't, that wasn't the chin bob, <laughs> but I had cut it into like a, you know, like I like that blunt, them blunt cuts. I was like, wait a minute, whose hair is this? Yeah, so no, I'm not coloring my hair again and I'm definitely not bleach. It wasn't mine. <laughs> No, <laughs> um, well, I don't know, I don't know. I, I'm not the person to like never, I'm not, I, never say never, that's what they say, never say never. Um, but as of today, my answer is no. Okay. <laughs> so this, la this is the last question, this is long. This is the last question. Why did you start a YouTube channel Okay, let me ask, let me, let me, I'll start the, why I started my channel, I'll do that one last. One of her other questions, if you were stranded on a deserted island, but had a full hair care line on hand for a wash and go, which line would it be? For a wash and go, I'm stranded on a deserted island. I would, for wash and, she said wash and go. She said wash and go. I would choose the Camille Rose Signature line. Yes. The shampoo, the Moroccan 
conditioner. I can use that as my little pre poo detangler. Algae Renew Deep Conditioner. My Moisture Love Leave-In. Almond Jai Butter. And then my, um, what's that thing called? What's the gel called? Curl Maker. Curl Maker. And then I'll have my Aloe Butter Gel for when I want to do a twist out. But she ain't say twist out, she said wash and go. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would choose. Now, as I do more wash and goes, that might change, but as of today, that's what I'm choosing. Hey, baby. I like it. Mm. All right, guys, and this is the last question. Nikki says, why did you start a YouTube channel? And whew, I started my channel because I just wanted to share in a more like vast way. Like whenever I was at the store uh, and I'm in the hair aisle, I'm giving people advice. I mean, I'm giving product recommendations. I'm, I'm, I'm doing all the things like long conversations. People would call or text me like family members and friends, ask me what they should do, what they should use. And it just kind of was like, hmm. Maybe there's something here, you know? And I watched a ton of YouTube, like a ton of it. I've been watching YouTube since what, 2007? So yes, <laughs> it's been a while. And um, I don't know, I just felt like, I felt just felt called to it kind of in a way. So I started my channel in 2017 and I was like, yes, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna post videos. I know what I was doing and I never posted anything. And so then 2018 came around and I said, girl, you had to, you hadn't had this channel for a whole year. You had to do something about it. And so I did and I started slow and I was just sharing, sharing my journey, sharing product recommendations, sharing my product junkieism, and just really enjoying the journey. And for me, it is about helping people, right? Like one of the ways that I get fulfillment, I guess like one of my, things is wherever I am, I just want to be helpful. I want to be able to pour into people, you know? And so, yeah, I just, that's what I do here. <laughs> that's really my goal is to be a resource, um, is to be a sounding board when y'all stress about whatever's going on with y'all hair. Just share the things I like, uh, make y'all laugh, spark joy, bring joy or whatever. Um, so yeah, so I started my channel to help. And so that when I was at the store, um, my husband's waiting for me in the car, I could be like, check out my YouTube channel. <laughs> because he, yeah. <laughs> but thank you all for your questions. This was fun to record. If you guys have any other questions, you can put them down in the comments and I'll film another one of these in the new year. Um, but that's it. I appreciate all of y'all support. Um, I still can't believe that 6,000 plus people have chosen to, you know, be in my little corner of the universe of the YouTubes. And I am definitely grateful. Um, so that's it. That's all I got. I'm very tired. This took a lot out of me, um, talking for like almost an hour. If you made it to the end, wow. Wow, you a real one. <laughs> but I'm gonna go now. I have to film the end of my Nature's Little Secret video. I probably won't do that tonight because I'm very tired, but either way, appreciate y'all. Thanks for hanging with me. Let me know in the comments what parts of this journey you want to be a part of. And I'll try to, you know, share pieces of me. And that's it. But let me scoot over it. Oh, yeah, I got some videos that I put on the screen. Just in case, I mean, y'all don't watch all this, but you could also watch one of these. <laughs> and of course, until next time, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'm sending you peace, love, and good hair day vibes. Bye, guys.